The town was a great military station. And beyond this, nothing. In one way or another, the people were all engaged in servicing the king. They kept the king's accounts, labored the king's fort, wrought in the king's forge, manned the king's pilot boats. A guard of soldiers kept watch over the great treasure chest in the fort. A guard watched in the powder house in the plains south of the barracks. A guard noted the marking of high noon on the sundial, and by the flowing of the sands in the hourglass in the plaza all day and all night, recorded the passing of time by the strokes of a bell. The funeral processions to the streets were led by the padre in his robes, and by acolytes in surplices bearing a crucifix, candles, and aspisorium. Feast days and festivals were scrupulously observed. The massacre of Madrid, Dos de Mayo, was commemorated by the solemn celebration of High Mass, and the flags throughout the city were displayed in mourning. With carnival time came mirth and merrymaking, harlequins, dominoes, and punchinoes held high revel, and gay companies of maskers went about the streets. Among them, taking the part of St. Peter, went one clad in a ragged dress of a fisherman, and equipped with a mullet cast net, which he dexterously threw over the heads of not unwilling children, by such rude travesty, setting forth the apostolic fishing for men. In the afternoon of Palm Sunday, priests and people marched in procession from the church. South of the convent, where on its platform in the open air, stood an altar. Then all repaired in procession to Fort San Marco, where, at a second altar, the rites were repeated. On Easter Eve, the waifs went about the streets, singing beneath the windows the accompaniment of violin and guitar, the Menorcan hymn of praise to the Virgin. Ended the days of sadness. Grief gives way to singing. We come with joy and gladness, our gifts to Mary bringing. Thank you for watching. If you didn't know about daily life in Spanish Florida, well, now you do.